Because as I'm telling you right now, if you do this, you will make more money, right? You will make more money than you currently are, and the fear of losing and winning disappears in your trading and investing. You are able to control your emotions in your trading and investing in your financial decisions. You will accumulate and attract more money once you do this. You will be more strategic. You will make more, be more financially savvy. You will be a financial genius. And people say, how are you doing that? The secret is not to have a phenomenal strategy. The strategy fits in this, and you'll see this. And once I've explained this, you'll understand how this model fits within everything that I'm going to be teaching you. Okay? So, here is the mistake that most people make. Mistake one. They don't save money. Do you know how few people actually save money or love saving money? Okay, or they don't save a consistently progressive amount of money, right? They don't save money. Mistake two: they pour all the. I've seen this many times. Somebody that blow, blows their account and just they go, "Oh, I just blow my ten grand, twenty grand, fifty grand account, whatever it is," and they get fifty grand and they pour it all back into their into this thing. Hoping to make a killing and pay the bills. That is that is a massive mistake. And my my hope and wish is once I explain this to you, you guys start applying this. Okay. Three, they don't really distribute their profits into other assets. Okay. These three things, making any of these three mistakes, will mess up your financial trading and investing. And here's why. Rule number one: I want you to understand every single rich person in the world does this. Right. You must save a progressively increasing sum of money and pour it into separate asset accounts. Now, in America, the average saving is 1% to 2% of their money. That's the average. Now, to have that, that means that is taken from the people who are saving massive percentage of their money to people not saving none. So to get an average of 1% to 2%, you realize most people aren't saving any money at all let alone saying I'm going to increase the amount of money that I save and people go but Patrick surely surely Patrick saving money isn't the secret to wealth if I had a great strategy I'd make a load of money now it's interesting because I heard about um, a black woman that was in America who was paid no more than $2.70 per hour okay $2.70 an hour that's all she saved now I reckon 99% of the people in this room if you've got some form of income, you're getting paid more than $2.70 an hour. And if you're getting less than that or all that, then you'll be glad to hear what I'm going to tell you. She saved a minimum of something like 17 to 20% of her money, whatever she was paid. She saved every single day. She saved it. She saved it. She saved it. She saved it. And she poured it into different assets, poured it into the caught some of the biggest stock market rises and falls and cut big term trends. She didn't do any day trading, she just caught these massive trends. She recently donated ten million dollars to charity of her money, of her wealth. Not all her wealth, a portion of her wealth, power portion, proportion of her wealth. Ten million. It is not the it is not the amount, it's the consistent habit of saving which will set you up to become financially free. And when you redistribute that money in how I'm going to show you, this is how you become financially free. So, you must save and if you increase the amount that you save, you keep increasing this amount, you will become financially free quicker and faster once you do this. Now, to really save money and to keep increasing the amount you save, it's going to have to be high on your values. Because most people don't want to save money. Do you know what most people want? They want the money to spend on lifestyle and things like this. Okay, I'm going to tell you, you can have that lifestyle. I'm going to tell you the easiest and the best way to have that lifestyle. However, by taking your money and spending it on lifestyle, the thing that most people really want, rather than having that deferred gratification, rather than doing the two marshmallows rather than the one, you're stopping yourself from having a phenomenal lifestyle and setting yourself up for life to be financially free.
The people, the most people are going to give me the one marshmallow. No, I want that. I want the car. I want those clothes. I've got to keep up with the Joneses. Oh, don't you understand? I need that. I, it's essential. Right? So that is going to mess you up having that thought. Now, if you have to have a value of saving money more than spending money because people will spend money in the order or allocate it in alignment with what is truly most important to them. So if you have a high value on saving and you keep taking a proportion of your money and saving it and saving it and saving it, you could do what that old woman did who took $2.70 an hour and make a massive sum of money. You just make sure you say, the first part of all that I earn is mine to save invest and grow then you know spend the rest but make sure you have in your mind the first part every time you earn any money the first part the minimum they say is 10% right 10% 10% 10% and um, I have a friend a good friend of mine he's always giving he gives 10% away uh, um, ours, um, to the church and then he gives another bit of money to like some deacons offering and something, some other offering and things like this. And I say, why is it you don't pay yourself that religiously, if you want another word, um, in exactly the same way as, as you do it to them, as you give it to them? Okay? And he says, oh, I said, would you ever pay yourself more than you pay the church? No, no, no. So let me get this right. You will give the church 15%. You'll pay yourself less than that and you'll give the rest of the money, you'll spend it on bills and consumer and he says oh yeah yeah well that's paying myself I said that's not paying yourself that is giving the church money which is nothing wrong with that that's fine but then you're giving it to Mr. Electric Man, Mr. Property Man, Mr. Books Man, do you know what I mean? You want to pay yourself and keep a big proportion of your wealth so that you have money working for you rather than you having work than you working for money. Okay? So in the Bible, it says man cannot have two masters. You cannot serve God and serve money. Do you know what? I believe that. I think that's true. I think I'm going to get all religious on you. Right? But here's the thing, right? I'll tell you why I believe that. Because as long as you're working for money, you're having two masters in some ways. So you might as well learn to save money and have money working for you. Then, you know, you can serve God and have money serving you. Does that make sense? All right, so there are three places. Exactly, Karen. It's called paying yourself first, right? There are three places that you're going to get income from. Your salary job, some form of self-employment thing that you do, or your business. Now, understand, someone might go, um, day trading is, a, is some sort of self-employment thing, okay? Understand, that is your income. That's one of the – I'm not saying it's an easy thing to do. It Take, takes people, most people many, 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 many years to be successful at day trading in order to have that as a consistent, reliable income source, okay? But, and the whole point of that is to take a portion of that and put it into investments, which I'm going to talk about. But there are three places. And understand, you don't need to be doing that to be rich in what we're talking about in this series. You could have, like that woman, the $2.70, but keep saving a massive sum of it and you redistribute it in the correct way. Your self-employment thing, that could be some form of a doctor, that could be some sort of self-employed business, some sort of consultancy, some form of coaching. I don't know what it is for you, right? So you are the system in the self-employed thing, or you could have a business, a business system. You take up a portion of that money and pay yourself first. Pay yourself first, okay? Most people have a problem with that, but I'm telling you now, successful and rich people, Pay themselves first, pay the taxes second, pay the lifestyle third, pay the business expenses last. Here's what most poor people do. They don't have a business, so they pay the lifestyle first. No, they pay the tax man first. They pay their, their, li their lifestyle second and don't have any money left to pay, pay themselves. So, pay yourself first. And I always say this, and I read this, and I thought that's a brilliant concept. When you, If you've got a job, let's say you're working mm, 10 hours a day. I'll just do 10, so it makes it easy, right? You're working 10 hours a day and you say, I'm going to pay myself 10% of this money. You sit there and you go, do you know what? This, this first hour is for me. This money in this first hour is for me. The other 90%, the other nine hours, you're paying, you're working for somebody else. Do you realize that? You're taking that money and you're going to pay for the house and this and this and this, the mortgage, the banks, the, the car, the, you understand, the bill, the, 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 the utilities, whatever, the children's education. The money 
is going to end up with somebody else with 90% of those things. So you might as well go, this first hour is my money, whatever it is, or proportion of that money. Up to 50% of that money is mine, is all mine, okay? Then, once you get this money, here's what you do. You need to take a third of it and you need to put it into security assets. So let's imagine it was $3 you're saving, or $30, right? $10 goes into here, security assets. $10 goes into cash flowing assets, and $10 will go into capital gain assets. Say that again. Let's imagine you're saving $30 um, a week. $10 will go into here, $10 will go into here, and $10 will go into here, into capital gains assets. Set up three separate types of bank accounts to separate the money, divorce yourself from it. And say that money is now you're going to have money. Now we're going to start having money working for us. You, you're now starting to become a good money manager, an excellent money manager. Okay. Now, what's in the security bucket? Things like your insurance, things like physical gold and silver for fiat currency risk. You got things like your home, right? Fixed interest payments, paying you an income from fixed interest. There's many different forms of that. Having cash, three to 12 months of living expenses in case something happens, okay? You want, you want that, that sense of, gives you financial security going, you know what, I've got these, all these things sorted and we've got money going to a 401k or in the UK we call it a pension and I think in Australia you call it a pension as well. But the point is, that is that, that's what that money is designed to do. Then, you have money in cash flowing assets, business asset systems. And the reason why I've written the word systems is because a business is a system. Property investing, in many ways, these things are all businesses. They're sort of a business, assets, okay? You're pouring money into business assets, property assets, paper assets, and commodity as systems that give you only things that give you a cash. This is not trading, by the way. This is not your day trading or anything like that. This could be, for example... Um, let's some an internet business system, which is a business which gives you a consistent passive cash flow, for example, or you invest in someone else's business. You could invest in some property investment sort of scheme, and that you get a percentage of the rental income. I've seen how you can invest in hotels and get paid a percentage for people staying in the room. You could invest in, you could have diagonal spread. You could have right, and that's a system. Does that make sense? You could own dividend stocks. You could put the money in sort of note, and I'm not going to say. The hedge funds goes into the other one, okay? But it could be, you might go, do you know what? I class hedge funds as a cash flow in paper asset system. Or you could invest in oil and gas. And there's many of those sorts of assets, which is why I'm going to have experts coming in on here telling you all about those. And there's multiple, multiple, multiple ones. You could be investing in, I know someone that manages gar garages. I don't know what you call them in, in the US. A garage, you know where you park your car in it. And you're telling about the returns on garages. Garages it was phenomenal, better than owning property. So I'll have these experts coming in here telling you about all these different things. That is how you become financially free. Because you are not working for money anymore. You are having money work for you earning you money, you're doing what you want to do with your time, but you've got money working for you. Then you take a proportion, that other, that other $10, business assets, you, right? You could, you know, a startup and invest in some sort of stock and then, then an exit sort of strategy or an IPOs or those things like that. You're looking for pure capital gains. Property is like buying a property, doing it up and then flipping it and selling it. Paper assets is your trading. That's your actual trading. Or commodity assets. Oh, I'm going to buy this bit of gold at this price and I'm going to sell it at this higher price, which is different from having money hedged for inflation risk. Does this make sense? Do not think, uh, oh, yeah, if I buy an ETF in gold, it's the same as commodity assets. It's not. Diversification is not owning 500 stocks. Diversification is owning different asset classes. Does that make sense? That's what true diversification is. Once you've done this, right, 
you're now going to have money working for you. You're setting yourself up. Because the secret now then is, once you get made a profit, you redistribute it. So for the capital gains, right, you could have a timeline. You might say, you know, every month, because of my trading, I'm doing a bit of trading, um, or day trading, or, or I'm doing swing or trend trading. I'll do it every year, or every three months, every six months. It's up to you based on the frequency of your trading, you take a third of those profits and you pull them back into your capital gains, a third into the cash flow, so you're buying more assets to make you money, and a third into your security assets, right? Then you take your cash flow profits, you put a third back into the cash flow, so you're growing more assets, a third into security assets, and a third into your lifestyle. Once this thing here, your lifestyle is paying for your bills, your expenses, your life. You are free. You will now be spending your whole time just managing money. And that's all you do. Or you could just keep doing your job if you absolutely love it. But that is how you become financially free. That is the real secret among secrets. That is how you become financially free. Day trading if you're interested in that, is in here. Paper assets, capital gains. Does that make sense, everybody? If you're doing property flips, that goes in here. Do you know, I can tell you this now, I have lost a massive sum of money by taking money and then thinking, why on earth would I put my money in and these other things where I can make massive sums of money just doing all my capital gain stuff. Do you know this is one of the biggest mistakes that most wealthy people make? I met somebody uh, to consult with somebody recently that was worth 200 million and his, I'll just say relative, was worth 2 billion. Okay? Because I don't want to, okay, not to say who it is. And, they lost a vast sum of that money. Do you know why? Because they had it all in here. They did not redistribute the profits. I have seen countless stories and I've heard countless brilliant teachers teaching this simple concept. Um, I like to, that's what I like to, well, I'll differ it by saying that is for your cash flow, that is for your capital gains. You could put your money, there are people that teach property investment strategies whereby you're leveraging yourself up, leveraging yourself up, leveraging yourself up. But when the economy turned, they were screwed, right? But rather than redistributing the profits to keep themselves level and having the diversification across the asset classes, that is the secret among secrets among secrets of managing your money and becoming financially free and rich and growing wealth. And making trading and if you start doing that and you start you realize you'll have like a like ends up like about 10 percent of your money in your day trading then if you lose some of your money you go oh so what right you you're not worried about it it will grow now people start going yeah but this is going to take ages to grow Patrick if I do it this way let me tell you this right now I know people have been trying to trade for 10 20 years trying to do it the other way and there's no further ahead because that allocating your money enables you to manage your emotions and as Warren Buffett said, do not expect to be able to manage money unless you can manage your emotions. So this is one of the most powerful things you could possibly do to manage your emotions. Without me telling you any psychological stuff. The psychological stuff just gives you a massive edge. But doing this alone will put you further ahead by managing your money. This is one of the true secrets of wealth which isn't taught.